hottest newbies, David Sheldon and Lynn Hutchison, caused quite a stir last summer with the plucky coming-of-age tale, Under the Veil. Join me, Richard Quest, in this daring look at the people behind the masterpiece. David Sheldon was born Amos Fisher in the Amish community of Lancaster County, Pennsylvania to John and Rebecca Fisher. Miraculously, at the age of four, Amos wrote his first short story. Eighteen months later, he completed his first full-length play. In the next year, John and Rebecca showed increasing concern over Amos's unorthodox displays of creativity. March 27, 1983 a day that would change his life. Amos presented his latest creation, a new puppet, who he named Jacob the Magnificent. Although John and Rebecca were willing to accept Jacob as part of the family, the rest of the Amish community were not. Lancaster County banished young Amos from the only home he had ever known. Key to his survival, Amos was already a resourceful farmer. He grew to be quite comfortable with nature, claiming the beasts of the wild as his friends. But as the years passed, his curiosity led him to wonder what lay beyond his Jungle Book lifestyle. Not too far away, in the Catskills of Upper New York, Amos would soon find his new home. Two years after Amos left his home in the forest, in a small town north of Lincoln, Nebraska, the celebrated roller-dancing duo of Ricky Barrett and Charlotte Snow adopted a young girl named Lynn. Lynn felt quite at home with Barrett and Snow and began performing as a professional roller dancer at the age of 12. As the 90s progressed, however, so did the age of the rollerblade. The roller skating industry was in panic. Roller skate production nearly ground to a halt. Rink organists were getting laid off. Lynn was forced to find other career opportunities. October 13th. 1991. Comedian Billy Crystal was on a break in the kitchen at Gossinger's when he heard a rustle in the back of the room. Amos Fisher was hiding in the bread pantry. Crystal took him in, changed his name to David Sheldon, and tutored him in the ways of comedy and entertainment. January 22nd, 2001. After working with Crystal for nearly a decade, David Sheldon got on a plane headed for Hollywood. Unbeknownst to him, he would meet the other half of his creative vision only two years later. Amsterdam, I caught up with David and Lynn in their canal side flat last month. Lynn, David, thank you for joining me on the show today. Thank you, Richard. Oh, it's our pleasure. It's been exactly a year now since Under the Veil screamed onto the cinematic scene and turned Hollywood on its ear. 
truly you've amazed the world with this monumental work. Thank you. We, we couldn't be happier with the society's response to the film. Yes, the response to the film. Why do you think there is all this hype? What do you think has made this film such a success? I think it's a story that society was ready to hear. It's a universal theme. We're all searching for that high. For you, where did the inspiration come from? Oh. Well, Richard, it really was an organic extension of both of our life experiences. As a part of the Amish community, I learned of the power of seasons, the transformation of nature over time. Before leaving Lancaster, I found my way into the Catskills of New York City with Billy, and then ended up in Hollywood. But that line, that, that line, he was born in the summer of his 27th year on a road to a place he'd never been before. That is my experience. That story is me. We were both on that road, Richard. As an artist, I was heading towards the penultimate experience genuine self-expression. UTV really gave that to both of us. Okay, let's talk about the behind-the-scenes drama, The Lawsuit. Mm. In our film, we feature a 3x3 three three grid of actors. Some folks from a show that's now in syndication filed a lawsuit against us. They claim we stole their idea. I really can't say more without my wife present. So then, David, how did you choose the actors for the squares? We started our search in the Jewish-Irish step dancing community in New York City. I first saw Audrey in Lord of the Sabbath in 96. She was great on stage and there was something about her smile that was so familiar. Almost as if I were staring at a mirror image of myself and her passion for fusing Judaism with step dancing was very intriguing to me. I headed back to the Big Apple to see her again. But not only was Audrey great, the star of the show was great too. Craig Stein O'Flaherty, inventor of the Pesach two-step. He was so spry and had really incredible hair. I knew he'd have a great on-screen presence. I decided to nab him before another mainstream producer had a chance to steal him away. After the show, I introduced myself. We had a cup of coffee at the Carnegie Deli. I asked the pair if they'd be interested in being a couple of squares in our upcoming film. Well, the rest is history. Okay, thank you. Well, let's talk now about Katie. Katie gained overnight musical success in the 80s, appealing mostly to mall-destined adolescents. Known for her demure stage presence and stunning wardrobe, she had a brilliant solo career, attracting audiences from every corner of the globe. She spent a year touring Japan with the Spice Girls and is now pursuing an acting career. Yes, I heard there was some mishap right before the shoot. Katie experienced acute maxillofacial dystortia, AMD, lip hypertension triggered by the exotic cucumber juices commonly used by cosmetologists. AMD symptoms include lip misalignment and unexplained redness. It's a very awkward condition and can take up to a month to recover. Katie's beautician, Glenda Jones, is undergoing questioning by the California Board of Cosmetology. Yeah, interesting, because people had speculated that Audrey also had some poor lip work done just before the shoot. Would you care to comment on that? Hmm. I hadn't noticed. Hmm. Okay, well, let's talk about the bottom right square. In order to balance out the grid, we had a certain look in mind. A slick-looking smile, a... Uh large sagittal crest, great hair. An experienced no-namer, Dan Schrader, professional body double. A professional body double? Schrader's what they call a cleanup man. 
When an actor has to spend some time at Betty Ford, gets into trouble, or whatever, Dan gets called in to do the shoot. Originally from Berlin, Daniel Saratsky, now Dan Schrader, got his start filling in for American actors overseas. His big break came when he was summoned to Tunisia to fill in for a young and party-hardy Harrison Ford. After that, word of Dan's wit and comedic timing spread, and he was soon spending more time in the States than in Germany. In spite of the language barriers, he doesn't know his arschlock from his elbow, he's got a great career going for him. Okay, well, let's now talk about the middle row. Jonah, Jack, and Ben. What are they all doing now? Jonah returned to the St. Louis Shakespeare Company and was cast as Duncan in their upcoming production of Macbeth. Benjamin is headlining as Simba on Broadway in the hit musical The Lion King. After winning the obscure title of The Whitest Man Alive, Jack went on to pass the bar exam. He is now a practicing real estate lawyer in Tulsa. This is Jack's father. He delivers mail in Denver's prestigious Observatory Park. Okay, so Under the Veil discussion would not be complete without a discussion about Norm Sheldon. Tell me more about Norm Sheldon. It all started on the Hollywood Squares. As a man who seems to know a lot about everything, Norm was a natural. His quick conclusions, vast array of experiences, and sensitive persona quickly gained him the highly acclaimed middle square position. He was Hollywood's biggest square for over 7,000 episodes. We went straight to the top for this one. Norm's agent, Vinnie Goldberg, is an old friend of mine. He's big in the square business. He'd done it all. Brady Bunch, Hollywood Squares, you name it. Vinny and I were on a Mexican safari together a couple of years ago. Getting Norm on board was just a phone call and a handshake away. Ah, interesting. I'd heard there had been some controversy about his position in the square. The top center square is vitally important. It's clearly the strongest part of a square formation. I had always assumed that corner squares were the most important part of a square formation. Sure, sure that might be true. Hollywood squares used totally different math, which made the whole situation quite confusing. For them, because of geometric dilation, the center square held all the power. But we had already signed Jack to the middle square and being educated in contractual agreements, Jack had to sign a no-move clause before agreeing to do the film. Utilizing the application of differentiation, we showed Norm that his top center square position was equally strong, if not stronger. You see, Dick, Norm's a man of reason. Well, moving on, um, I was pleased to see Norm's wife back on the big screen. What was it like working with her then? D.H. Lawrence once said, Be still when you have nothing to say. When genuine passion moves you, say what you've got to say and say it hot. Our center bottom square was definitely hot. Charo, who her friends know as Brenda Levitt, came to us after having spent the last four years in South America, where she had been doing extensive stage tours promoting her album. Being that her greatest strengths are as an entertainer, she wasn't immediately convinced that the role was right for her, even though Norm had already agreed to work with us. But we knew she'd be the right one. We decided to appeal to her Latino sensitivities. We sent a mariachi band to her house with a note attached. They kept playing until she said yes. I'd love to work with her again someday. David, Lynn, what can we expect from the two of you now in the future? Well, we're officially merging our companies in May of 2006. We're very excited about it. <laughs> we're already developing our first ideas together. We've got two documentaries that we're looking at.
riveting script by an up-and-comer named James Slinger. A romantic comedy. And a piece that I think will really speak to the craft community. Judging by the success of Under the Veil, I'm sure we'll all be queuing to see your next creation. Thank you both for joining me on the show today. Thank you, Richard. It's been our pleasure.